Hello, I'm Ted Nicolau, director of TerraVision and Subspecies, among other films. And you're watching Video Relics. You'll learn a lot of inside stories by watching. Uh, Terravision came about uh, in the days of uh, Charles Band's Empire uh, Productions. And then once he had the poster art, he would call a director in and, and show you like a selection of posters and ask which one appealed to you. And one of them was a monster coming out of a TV set. And the idea appealed to me. I had edited a number of films for him before, so I basically knew what John Beekler, the guy who would create the monster, what he was capable of and what his strengths and uh, weaknesses were. And so I asked Charlie if I could uh, make it a comedy. He said yes, and he was not known for comedies at the time. Uh, so basically it came about from a poster, monster coming out of a TV set. And uh, once I said yes, he said, okay, go write the script. And so then I took that basic idea and kind of expanded upon it. When I was a kid, my father uh, would take me on Saturdays to to like the Saturday afternoon uh, matinees of uh, of like monster movies and flying saucer films and so i i gained a real love of of those movies and then at at night on tv at midnight on friday or saturday night were the you know frankenstein and dracula and all those movies that inspired your imagination uh but then i uh, in high school uh my father had a 16 millimeter camera so me and my friends would go out and kind of shoot videos of us kind of doing stupid things out in the real world when I went to college, uh, my parents thought I was going to be a doctor because my father was a psychoanalyst. And I went to, to into pre-med and was playing music at the same time and uh, met a guy named Daniel Pearl, who was the went on to be the, the director of photography for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, and we were in classes together and we became really close friends. Daniel and I both just kind of went, fuck this being a doctor, let's go to the films, you know, enroll in the film department. So we both enrolled in the film department and started taking film courses. And there was a guy who was really inspirational to me, especially uh, named Rod Whitaker, who wrote uh, novels under the pseudonym uh, Trevanian at the University of Texas at that time. There were There was money available to the students to make short films. And so we were able to make films and kind of practice the craft. And that basically is what started me out, you know, and then uh, living in Austin uh, when the Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, was shooting and I got hired to be the sound man. It sort of put me in the middle of a crew and taught me a lot about, you know, what it was like to, to actually, you know, sustain shooting over, you know, weeks and weeks. And, uh, then after that, a bunch of my friends started leaving Austin, Texas and coming out to Hollywood. And uh, eventually I followed them and, and got, a, got work a, as an editor and um, edited films for a few years before I got a chance to direct. What the hell? I never really thought about uh, my relationship between technology and evil and the kind of monsters and the creations and the films that I've done. Um, I think television naturally was monster comes from a TV set, satellite dish. I mean, I've always been a fan of like 1950s uh, monster movies and atomic era monster movies. And so, so in those films, there is a definite connection between technology, nuclear technology, and the monsters that kind of come out of that. So so I guess that's part of my uh, horror imagination it, it involves technology. I also love 
the look of technology and like uh, power generating stations and miles and miles of uh, of um, high tension wires that, that string across the landscape. So there's something in it for me visually too. Um, the, uh, you mentioned bad channels and the funny thing is after Terravision, Charlie Band proposed to me, hey, let's do bad channels now. And I avoided that for like over a year or so because I, I felt like I'd already kind of done monster comes out of a piece of technology. So I didn't, I, I really uh, kind of hesitated before doing that film. And finally he sort of wore me down and, and I did it. And uh, uh, as far as remote goes, that was, uh, Charlie had a baby and, and his wife decided we should be making fantasy films for kids too. And so that film came about just as the, as the kind of branching out of the full moon universe. Hey, butthead, you think your buffets are hot? Get a load of this. <laughs> One of the films that made me want to become a filmmaker was a Fellini film called uh, called uh, Juliet of the Spirits. For me, that film uh, was so magical and so scary and so spiritual and so hallucinatory all at once that uh, and so colorful and the music was so phenomenal that that movie uh, made me realize what how powerful cinema could be. So so I I credit. Bellini and Ingmar Bergman as kind of my two kind of guiding lights in the very beginning of my career. You know, what's funny is that uh, my my life has been kind of devoted to making horror films, uh, but I'm, I'm not a big fan of horror films. Uh, you know, there are certain ones that I love and and a lot of ones that I that I just don't think are that great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I sort of set out in my life to be uh, a filmmaker who could tackle many, many genres and ended up kind of doing what I did. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've gotten to make some films that I'm very proud of and travel a lot and make friends around the world. So I'm not complaining, but it's not kind of what I set out to do in my life, you know. I'm a big fan of uh, of practical effects, makeup effects, uh, even practical special effects. I prefer to shoot on location because you're there. the The location influences the the acting. the The location inspires uh, certain kinds of camera angles, and uh, especially with creatures, uh, there's nothing greater than an actor being able to interact physically with the creature. The creature of television was a crazy beast. Crazy. Yeah. It required like uh, six yeah. people to operate it and two people inside and other people outside with the uh, with the tentacles and the eyeballs. And uh it was a a big hassle to to actually shoot on the set, but it gave that film and gave the actors so much to work with um that it was it was wonderful. You know, for me, watching a movie where the, where all the creatures are CG, yeah, you can you can do anything. And and I in a way, the ability to do anything kind of uh creates a situation where you're not forced to to come up with solutions and and use your imagination. And for me, the challenge of of making films is basically the fact that here is the here are the limitations. There's a real world. There's a fantasy world. You want to create from that. And uh, when I watch movies with a ton of CG, I just I become more and more aware that I'm just watching an animated film more than a than a piece of cinema. In Subspecies One was a movie filled with absurd situations from people being too drunk to shoot the crew going on strike every few days uh, because they weren't getting paid on time uh, but probably the most absurd of all 
was the sword fight scene in subspecies number one. The swords were like these real broadswords, heavy, real broadswords with nicks. So they were kind of like uh, bread knives or something from being clashed so many times. Uh, the first time we set out to shoot that scene, the they started clashing their swords and the and the blade broke off. Um, and so we had to stop filming, uh, try to get into the welding shop of the studio, but the man with the key was not there. And there was always a man with the key to let you in places. So we kind of lost the day of shooting there. Then the next day we tried to shoot the sword fight. Um, the actors, Anna Hove and Michael Watson, got drunk before uh, we were going to start shooting. They were really upset and got drunk. And then they were really mad at me because they were so drunk. And and I said, oh, we can't shoot this with you guys drunk. Somebody will get killed. And the stunt, the Romanian stuntman took me aside and said, no, 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 Mr. Ted. It's good to be a little drunk when you do a sword fight. I was <laughs> like, no, sorry, we're <laughs> not doing it. And so that day we couldn't shoot. And then another day they were so drunk we couldn't shoot. And uh, so so for me, that was, I mean, that movie was filled with with things that just made me despair that we would ever finish the film. But that was probably the most absurd situation that I've ever confronted on set. You know, everybody's consuming uh, movies on their TVs uh, through various streaming services. But uh, the problem with streaming services is they license a movie for a certain period of time. And then that movie may be dropped at some point and you'll have a hard time ever finding it again. And if you if you appreciate certain movies and you want to have them to watch again, uh, you know, every year or something, uh, there's nothing like owning the physical media, and indeed, uh, I think it was a it was better for the industry of like B movies and low budget films that that I was a part of uh, when people would buy physical media because that was actually a prof became a profit uh, for the producers. And it was a tangible kind of profit. Whereas now on streaming, you maybe earn a few pennies every time somebody watches a film. And, and it's, it takes a long time to kind of make your investment back. So I'm all for uh, real uh, physical media. Basically, I've got a, a kind of a supernatural thriller script that I'm writing right now in hopes of getting to do it um, with Anna Sove from Subspecies and uh, an actress that I met on Subspecies 5, a uh, Serbian actress, uh, Stasha Nikolic, uh, who I think is a spectacular young actress. Uh, so I'm writing that. Uh, Charlie Band asked me to direct a movie called Barbenheimer that is... Uh, it's going to, it's a spoof of Barbie and Oppenheimer together. Mm -hmm. uh, so that should be more in the law in line with uh, the television kind of um, comedy uh, fantasy film. Uh, and then I've got some other guys that I'm trying to work with um, doing a movie and maybe we'll get to make a sequel to television if, if things work out.